Hi, let me explain to you how I went from the study of the Collatz conjecture to the weirdest programming language I have ever seen. So first, what's the Collatz conjecture? So we're going to play a little game. The game is the following. We have two functions. The first function is x over 2, and the second function is 3x plus 1. And the game goes uh, as uh, follows. We take an input number, for example, let's take 7, and we're going, we are going to apply the first function. For example, here, 7 divided by 2 gives 3.5. If it's not a whole number, we're going to apply the second function. So here, it's not a whole number. 7 over 2 is not whole. So we're going to take 3 times 7 plus 1. So 3 times 7 plus 1 gives 22. And then we begin the whole process again. So 22 divided by 2 gives a whole number. It's 11. Now, 11 divided by 2 is not whole, but uh, 11 times 3 is 33, plus 1 is 34. And we go on like that. Eventually, we get to 1. And then 1 divided by 2 is not a whole number. So 3 times 1 plus 1 gives back 4 and 4 gives 2, and 2 gives 1, so it's a cycle, it's, and it's never going to end. And the conjecture is the following, for every whole number, which is positive, it will end in this 4 to 1 cycle. Okay, so it's very complicated. It's a very hard problem. Paul Erdos even said that mathematics are not ready for this kind of problems. Okay, so why am I talking about the Collatz conjecture? Because Conway, who is in the background of the video, proved a neat fact. He proved that an infinite number of problems similar to the Collatz conjecture are not provable. How did he do it? Well, he created a programming language called Fractron, where every program is a list of fractions. Okay, so what is the fraction programming language? Well, a program will just be a list of fractions. For example, 2 thirds, 5 over 7 will be our program. And then, as an input, we're going to take a whole number, for example, 21. And then we're going to apply a similar process to the coax conjecture. So, we're going to multiply 21 with 2 thirds. The result is 14. It's a whole number, so it's our new input. Now, we're going to multiply 14 with 2 thirds. And it's not a whole number. So we're going to discard it, and we're going to go to the next fraction. Now, this yields a whole number, 10, and it's our new input. Now, 10 does not give a whole number when multiplied by 2 thirds, and it does not give a whole number when multiplied by 5 over 7. So our program is finished, and the output of the overall program is 10. Okay, so it's difficult to see how this would compute anything. Well, now I'm going to show you how to sum two numbers. The program which computes the sum of two numbers is very simple. It's only two thirds. Now, how does it work? Well, to understand how the fractional programming language works, you have to consider every number as its prime number factorization. So let's say we have an input number, which is of the form two to the power of a times 3 to the power of b. Then I claim that this program will compute the sum as follows. The output will be 2 to the power a plus b. It's fairly easy to see. I'm, I will give an example to show you. For example, 
let's compute 3 plus 2. Okay, so I put the number 3 instead of A and the number 2 instead of B, and I'm going to apply the program. Well, if I multiply this number by, by 2 thirds, I'm going to decrease the power of 3 by 1 and increase the power of 2 by 1. So I get 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 1. And then when I do it again, I get 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 0. And now I can't multiply by 2 thirds again because I will not get a whole number, because I have not a positive power of 3. The result will be 2 to the power of 5, and it's indeed the sum of 3 plus 2. And in fact, this is how the fraction programming language works. When you have a fraction, it is at the same time a test, an, an increment, and a decrement. I will explain how the fraction programming language works in its entirety. First, how does the input work? So if I represent a number as its prime factor decomposition, I can see any number as an infinite register machine. Why? Because every register has a name, it's a prime number, and it can contain a positive value from zero to infinity. For example, if I would like to store um, two to, in the register two, one in the register three, four in the register five, and uh, zero in all other registers, I would simply get 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 1 times 5 to the power of 4, and that's it. This number is unique because of the fundamental theorem of arithmetics. Now that we understand how the input works, we're going to explain how the program works. So a program is just a list of fractions, and in fact, we have to see a program as a big while loop. It's a big while loop because every time we multiply successfully a fraction, then we go back to the beginning. And every fraction, we have to see it as the following. At the bottom, we have a test and a decrement. In fact, we test if in the register Q, there is at least the number B. Because if there is not at least the number B in the register Q, the result will not be a whole number. And at the same time, we're going to decrease the register Q by B. And on the numerator, we're going to increase the register P with the number A. We have tests, we have increments and decrements, and we have while loop. And we can show that this is in fact enough to be Turing complete meaning that we can compute anything with this programming language. Now, why is this interesting? Well, in fact, the fraction programming language is an even simpler version of the Collatz conjecture. Remember, I've written the Collatz conjecture as the following. It's a list of functions that you have to apply to a whole number, and we're going to see what you get at the end. And a fraction programming language can be written as the following. A fraction program is just a list of functions, a special kind of functions, but functions nonetheless. And you apply the same process as in the Collatz conjecture, and you see what you get at the end. So in fact, the Collatz problem is just a special case of fraction program. And now the punchline. The halting problem states that there are an infinite number of programs for which we cannot say if they terminate or not. So in fact, for an infinite number of fractional programs, we can't say if they terminate or not. So for an infinite number of problems really similar to the Collatz conjecture, we can't say if they're true or not. It's undecidable. Even though John Orton Conway proved that there are an infinite number of problems similar to the Collatz conjecture, which cannot be proven, he did not prove that the Collatz conjecture is undecidable. It's still an open problem and one of the hardest. And now, for the beauty of it, I'm going to show you a fractional program which computes all prime numbers. Mm -hmm.